Hi, welcome to Seymour's World. I'm Seymour Kazimersky on ThinkTech Hawaii. We are here today to present a very, very interesting and very uh, uh, valuable show for people here in Hawaii as well as the rest of the world. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, medical marijuana. Uh, before we do, I just want to say thank you to all the hundreds of people who have uh, given me comments on the last show, which was uh, the show I did with Jay Fidel, called Here's to You, Seymour. I am fine. I, w I want you all to know that uh, my cancer is in check right now, and I'm feeling great. And uh, matter of fact, our guest, who I'm going to introduce in a moment, is one of my tennis partners and paddle tennis partners. And uh, we are going to be talking about uh, uh, something very close to my heart, because I'm going to be uh, going on a trial with cannabis uh, for my cancer in the next few weeks. I'm going to see how it can do for me. So without further ado, because we, we have so much to talk about, I want to introduce uh, Brian Goldstein. Brian, welcome to Seymour's World. Good morning. Uh, good it's morning. Great to you, be here. I know, and you've been on here before, right? You yeah. were with me, uh, I think, two or three years yeah, ago years. when we did years. a show, and you've been on with Jay before, and now your role as CEO of Manoa Botanicals, one of the licensees here in Hawaii. And I can tell all of you that Brian is one of the hardest workers I have ever, ever met. And when he decides to do something, he does it to the nth degree. He puts in 150% of his time and effort. And I'm very proud to have helped him a little bit in uh, getting Manoa Botanical started. So Brian, it's, uh, it's been a road for you, a difficult road, a hard road, but uh, there's only three people in, uh, in, on Oahu that have licenses and you are one of them. So first I wanna say congratulations. Thanks, Seymour. It's been a, a really interesting journey. I've been working on this uh, full time for over two years now, and it's a real fortunate uh, opportunity to to be in the position to help bring this, I think, really valuable medicine to the qualified patients of Hawaii. You know, when we talk about that, Brian, and we, we say it's medicine, we really have to get over the idea that marijuana is just the high. We have to understand that it truly is a medical breakthrough. It's been used for a long, long time, many, many years. Uh, I spent two weeks in Israel, as you know, doing some research on medical marijuana. And when I was there, I was shocked at how many ailments medical marijuana is assisting. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, well, the history of um, cannabis goes back uh, about 3,000 years. I mean, human beings and cannabis have been interacting for a very long time, and there's uh, documentary evidence to show that in, uh, in Egypt, in China, and, uh, and in Europe and the Americas that uh, cannabis has been used as medicine for hundreds and thousands of years. It's really only in the last 80 years uh, with, uh, due to uh, politics and racism that um, marijuana has been made illegal. Um, by uh, state, local, and federal governments. Uh, but we're really, in the last, I think, 10 to 15 years, we're seeing a lot of progress in uh, recognizing and acknowledging the uh, medicinal benefits of cannabis. Um, there is, unfortunately, because of the limits on, res on research, and um, your other guest today is really going to be able to talk to that, uh, because of the limitations on federal research, because cannabis is a Schedule One controlled substance, there really isn't a lot of uh, data um, other than an anecdotes. Uh, and some uh, clinical research trials that have been done um, showing the efficacy of cannabis um, in a variety of conditions. The most important, uh, some of the most well-documented is the, for um, helping in pain. Um, and uh, so there's really um, a lot of conditions for a lot of people that cannabis can help. In particular, um, we're, uh, we're seeing an opioid crisis in this country. And one of the uh, interesting sort of factoids that people, a lot of people aren't aware of is in the states where uh, cannabis medical marijuana is legal, they're seeing uh, significant drops of prescriptions of opioids. And here in Hawaii, Brian, it's a, it's a necessity because we've got a crisis here in Hawaii. And we have probably one of the worst percentages of opioid use here in Hawaii. Uh, we've got a, a high amount of young people on opioids. And when I did my research in Israel, I found 
breast cancer. I found sleep disorders. I found pain management. I found so many different ways that, uh, that cannabis is being used medically. And I think it's important for people to know why Manoa Botanicals is such a leader in this. Uh, we have a guest here today, which is your medical director, Dr. Susan Sisley. And Susan, we're going to get on with you very shortly. But I want you to talk about Manoa Botanicals and uh, why you are such a, a real proponent of using medical cannabis. Well, when I uh, started this journey of um, building the company and the team, uh, I really set out in trying to understand what the medical and therapeutic benefits of cannabis were, and we built, um, in doing that, we built a team of professionals, of scientists, of researchers, of physicians, and farmers, because in this case, we're actually farming a medicine, which is really a little unusual, and that's one of the reasons why I called the company Manoa Botanicals, because really cannabis is uh, a whole plant uh, botanical. Um, and uh, so our goal is to bring a really high quality pharmaceutical grade medicine to the qualified patients of Hawaii and to conduct research. Um, and helping, and the, some of the goals of that research will be to develop um, specific strains that have therapeutic benefits for particular disorders. We're starting to see research on that, like, like that in Israel, as an example, um, in, uh, in, uh, in other locations around the world. But um, what is, I think, the most um, fun part for me is the opportunity to work with incredibly talented people like uh, Dr. Sisley. Without further ado, let's introduce Dr. Sisley. Uh, she is, uh, she's been associated with you how long? Well, I met Sue, uh, I guess it's about a year, year and a half ago in, uh, in the pre-license period um, as I was sort of doing research on the industry. And, uh, and it took us, we, we spent several months getting to know each other and sort of seeing um, you know, if we could work together. And, and she, I love her, she's uh, an amazing, amazingly talented uh, researcher, uh, compassionate physician, and really well-informed um, expert. In fact, I never know when I call or text Sue where she is going to be in the world. As an example, she's at a conference in Washington, D.C. now. She's a sought-after speaker um, uh, globally in the area of cannabis research, and I'm uh, just super pleased to have her part of the Manoa team. That's wonderful. Sue, uh, may I call you Sue instead of Dr. Yeah. Sisley? Please, Sue Hi. is much better. Welcome to Seymour's World. It's a pleasure to see you. At least we can see a little a little <laughs> bit of you. We can't see you directly. And you are in Washington, and I understand there's a bunch of bills in Congress that are, that are, uh, that are being considered right now. Yes, and uh, some of them will help loosen the restrictions on cannabis research, so that's why I'm out here trying to provide guidance. And you know, we have firsthand experience now with the barriers to research that the government has erected over so many decades, and so we can testify um, firsthand about how difficult these barriers are to overcome and how they prevent scientists from entering the field. I mean, one of the things that Brian just mentioned about, you know, that we, we are missing right now what we call strain science, which is what strains are best for what illnesses. And that was part of why I was so pleased to team up with, um, with Brian because I see that he's very committed to that science. And that's the, the science that is directly relevant to the day-to-day -day lives of his patients. His patients have specific questions about how does cannabis work for my illness, and those are the things that the government has impeded this work for so long, but now Brian has a golden opportunity to start, you know, as he begins to, you know, cultivate this medicine, he can he, he collect um, the feedback from these patients. He can collect clinical experiences about how patients are responding to various strains of cannabis and begin to look at trends of what strains seem to be best for, um, you know, chemotherapy-induced nausea, what strains seem to be best for intractable neuropathic pain. 
and we can begin to not just um, collect the data but publish it. And that's what I see that um, you know Brian's always been very serious about that. A lot of teams claim that they're going to do that and never follow through, but I know that he's determined to really make that happen. And it's going to take us a long time. It's not something that happens in a moment it you know but in i expect within the first couple of years we'll already have a substantial amount of data that we can begin to publish and put into the public domain i uh, i i admire you sue because you're speaking directly to a topic that's very close to my heart i have cancer and it's a, a cll leukemia lymphoma type cancer and uh, I've, I've, uh, I'm on a certain trial drug now, but I was just in touch with somebody in Israel, a doctor in Israel, who is uh, preparing a, a, a cannabis treatment for me. And uh, I have a lot of faith in it because when I went to Israel, as I mentioned before, I found that they are very, very profoundly interested in direct uh, connections between certain strains of cannabis to certain strains of illnesses. And it has really started to work. Let me ask you something, Sue. Uh, as medical, medical director for Manoa Botanicals, uh, I find Manoa Botanicals, of all of the licensees here in Hawaii, very, very focused on the medical use. How can you do that here in Hawaii? Can you actually grow certain, uh, certain cannabis products, or maybe, Brian, you should answer that, that are directly related to Alzheimer's or to certain types of diseases? Well, we're going to cultivate. Uh, we're going to bring, when we open our store, we expect we'll have uh, probably about a dozen or so strains available, and we're going to be rotating those strains through our dispensary. And one of the goals is to collect data from our patients for their specific conditions and to understand which strains are benefiting them. Um, and as that data is collected, we're going to be able to target our, um, our cultivation strategy to target those strains. So um, one of the ways that we do that is we have a variety of strains that have different levels of uh, CBDs or cannabinoids um, and the relationship to THC. So we're going to have high CBD strains, we'll have low THC strains, um, and because we're on an island in the middle of the Pacific and nothing can get shipped in or out of here due to the federal restrictions, we have to grow everything, manufacture everything, and sell everything. So it's really a fairly complex operation to, and a pretty expensive operation to stand up. Um, in most locations um, on the mainland, uh, the, these would be three separate companies, a uh, grower, a uh, manufacturer, and a dispensary. And what we're doing is we're standing up all three operations simultaneously in parallel um, and trying to do it quickly so that we can um, you know, get this medicine to the qualified patients of Hawaii who have been waiting, waiting a really long time. What is the status right now, Brian? Where, where are we as to when you're going to be able to open? Um, Manoa received a, a notice to proceed from the Department of Health to begin cultivation of cannabis in uh, early February. Uh, we constructed a nursery to um, start, those, uh, start those initial grow-out operations, and it's going very, very well. Um, uh, we are uh, very close to completing construction of our main production facility. And um, if things go reasonably well, um, and uh, most importantly, if we can get some testing labs certified in the next couple of months, um, then we should be uh, ready to open our dispensary in the fall later this year. Wonderful. Well, that's going to be very good news to a lot of patients that I have been speaking to. And people are calling me all the time and saying, when are you opening? When are you opening? And I keep saying, well, I don't know. So you feel that the fall will probably be or around that period of time? Yeah. I mean, um, I know you've been delayed several times because of the state issues and lab well, issues. And yeah, one of the key um, challenges that we face is that uh, there are no certified labs. Um, to test our uh, medicine. Um, and the Hawaii statute requires that any products that we sell in our dispensary have to be lab tested, um, which uh, is very important for us and for our patients. Um, and there are currently no labs, um, and we don't have visibility on when um, one or more labs will receive their certification from the Department of Health. Well, let's take a short break. 
And then we're going to continue with uh, Dr. Sue Sisley in Washington and with you and discuss more about the medical side of marijuana because I'm very interested in where you are going in the future. Today we have obviously certain strains, but I'd like to know what's happening in the future. This is Seymour Kazimersky on Seymour's World. We'll be back in a minute with Brian Goldstein and Dr. Sue Sisley. Thank you. Aloha, this is your host Beatrice Cantelmo. Uh, come and join us every Friday at 4 o'clock uh, on Perspectives of Global Justice. Hello, I'm Dean Nelson, host of Planet of the Courageous. From a Tibetan point of view, we chose to be on this planet because we enrolled in a sort of graduate school for courage. Just that we may have chosen this adventure is a leap of logic. The question is, how do we spend and make sense of this precious human life? We are, as a species, extraordinarily successful, dominating the planet and now with planetary size problems that our existence itself has created. It takes courage to face not only the uncertainty of life, but also the challenge of sustaining this gift of life for future generation. Join us every Monday at 3 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. Hi, welcome back to Seymour's World on Think Tech Hawaii. Our topic today is uh, medical marijuana, especially here for Hawaii with Manoa Botanicals. My guests are Brian Goldstein, who is CEO of uh, Manoa Botanicals, and we have Dr. Sue Sisley talking to us from Washington, D.C., who is the medical director for Manoa Botanicals. Sue, I want to get into what's happening with research. Um, I see many, many papers. As a matter of fact, Dr. Philip Kim, who's a friend of mine, uh, just sent you a paper. I don't know whether you got to read it or not which is pain management and uh, his work in pain management is uh, astounding. I was amazing at how many patients he treats with cannabis for pain management. Sue, can you, can you talk to that for us please? What's happening? Yeah, well, we were really lucky in January of this year, the National Academy of Sciences released what I consider a really groundbreaking report called the health effects of cannabis and the current state of evidence for cannabis research. And the report stated that there is conclusive evidence that marijuana can be used as a medicine. And that's really the first time we've ever seen a federal agency come out with such a definitive statement. Um, basically, the report, you know, found that, uh, you know, they, they didn't find clinical evidence for all conditions that cannabis treatment is often associated with, but it recognized its immense efficacy for treating many different medical conditions such as what you just mentioned, the chronic pain in adults, um, that also found substantial data to support cannabis for chemotherapy-induced nausea and vomiting, and also showed um, very strong efficacy for um, cannabis for multiple sclerosis and the spasticity, you know, the, the kind of musculoskeletal neurologic problems associated with MS. So I think this report is really a vindication for all of the patients and health providers and, and researchers who've, who've long understood the benefits of medical cannabis and who've dared to speak publicly about that but have been at odds with our own government who continues to insist that cannabis has no medical benefit, continues to, you know, to lump it into Schedule 1 with all these much more toxic drugs. So we finally have a thorough review of the scientific evidence from a respected federal agency that concludes that there are serious medical benefits to cannabis that, that really should boost the case for federal reform. That's what I'm hoping, that out of this report, and that's what I've been doing here in Washington, D.C., is taking that 400-page report and distributing it to all of these members who continue to hold very antiquated notions about cannabis to try to show them, look, your own federal government is now endorsing cannabis as a medicine. And it, it, I think this report really underlines how out of touch the DEA and other, you know, opponents of cannabis are when they continue to claim cannabis has no medical benefit. 
Let me ask you, Sue, what is your 12-month forecast? Where do you see us going when it comes to the federal government? Do you see the federal government actually changing their ways? Are they going to start looking at it? Is it going to take two years? What's your forecast? Well, now, being out here and dealing with these, you know, electeds one-on-one -on -one has been pretty discouraging. I have to say that I'm, I'm worried that... Um, that we're up against a, a brick wall here and hopefully they at least won't roll back what the existing structure if they would at least you know the good news is it, with the with the conservatives in power they all at least claim that they are respect the tenth amendment and that they will take a hands-off approach to medical programs and respect states rights so i i'm hoping that they will abide by that but it's still really unclear. As long as we have an attorney general, um, Jeff Sessions, who is is so you know kind of making these sort of wishy washy statements about respecting states' rights, I I continue to worry, and that's why it's so important that we have a presence here in D.C. and don't let these guys um, off the hook. You know, we need to keep their feet to the fire and help them see that there is real science to support this. That this is not. Um, you know, it, th th this isn't pseudoscience. These are, th you know, controlled trials published in peer-reviewed medical journals. This is serious data. And um, the fact that we now have 28, actually soon to be 29 states. I don't know if you saw them. West Virginia is about ready to sign mm -hmm. a medical cannabis law. So, you know, in another month, we'll have 29 U.S. states that have approved medical marijuana, another 16 states that have CBD-only laws. Um, you know, last summer the DEA announced it would not reschedule cannabis, but this NAS report um, had made it very clear that the barriers to doing meaningful research on this plant are 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 really impossible to overcome. It's amazing that we have the 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 studies that we actually you know that have been published even in the midst of all the the efforts of the government to systematically impede this work, and yet we still have an immense amount of scientific data to support its medical use. You're you're absolutely correct, Brian. Manoa Botanicals here in Hawaii is obviously a leader in getting ready to get started, right? Uh, and the, the products that you have, uh, the medical cannabis products that you are going to be selling, those will be uh, already authorized? Those will be products that can go to those patients directly? Right. So um, Manoa, as well as any of the other licensees, uh, we have to be in compliance with state law. There's a group of products that we're going to be able to sell, including flour and oils and tinctures, lotions, ointments, topicals, um, no edibles, no soft drinks, no brownies, no gummies. Um, but uh, regardless, it's still contrary to, to federal law. So. Um, but here in the state, we're going yeah. to be able to get the benefit of all of that research Absolutely. that Sue is talking about. Yeah, I mean, part of the challenge is that um, some of the research, well, it depends on what the research is on, on whether it's on whole plant smoked uh, cannabis, like uh, Dr. Sisley's study. Uh, she, Dr. Sisley's doing a groundbreaking study on whole plant smoked cannabis for the treatment of PTSD in veterans, um, and, which is very unusual because uh, most other studies are on specific extracts or they might uh, pull out a specific molecule or mm -hmm. uh, cannabinoid. Um, here in Hawaii, because we're in the middle of the Pacific and we're surrounded by federal air and federal waters, we have a lot of limitations. Um, and so we have partnered with the Hawaii Agriculture Research Center, which is a 130 plus year old uh, organization that does agricultural breeding and research. We have a half dozen PhDs uh, at uh, Hawaii Agriculture Research Center that are available to us to conduct breeding research. So as we start to see um, data come in from our patients, we're going to be able to use that data with the expertise of Dr. Sisley and some of our other physicians, as well as the breeding capabilities of uh, the, uh, the network of um, agricultural experts that we brought to bear um, to hopefully bring some Hawaii-specific genetics into, uh, into the world of medical marijuana. What about physicians, Brian? Yeah, so one of the challenges is 
is that um, we don't have a lot of physicians in Hawaii that are certifying patients. And one of our key challenges and goals is to educate physicians as well as registered nurses in addition to potential patients on the medical and therapeutic benefits of cannabis so that when patients go to their doctors and ask, and this is happening a lot, when they ask about medical marijuana, that they actually uh, that the physician or registered nurse is informed and can provide um, accurate and valuable information. So right now, doctors and PAs, uh, physicians assistants, and nurses can prescribe? Or yeah, in Hawaii, it's one of the few states that allows APRNs uh, to certify patients. So any physician or medical professional that has the ability to, a DEA license to write prescriptions can certify patients um, for medical marijuana. Um, unfortunately, um, none of the large hospitals allow their uh, physicians who are employees uh, to certify while they're, um, to, while they're um, employed. So it's really independent physicians and nurses that are really uh, leading the charge here and are in the vanguard of providing these uh, certification services. So a patient goes to a physician and the physician is able to write a prescription. Right? No, it's not a prescription. Oh, go ahead. So uh, you cannot prescribe uh, cannabis. marijuana yeah. or cannabis. Uh, so what they do is they certify that the patient has a qualifying condition, such, such as chronic pain or um, wasting syndrome or cancer or AIDS, PTSD. Um, and once they are certified as having a qualifying condition, then they can get a uh, medical marijuana card from the Department of Health. It's actually a very easy process. It took me about 10 days to get uh, my medical marijuana card. Mm -hmm. So you go to your physician first. You, 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 have, a, you have a condition that, uh, that the physician can say you are okay to get a card. And yeah. then you go to the, part, to the Department of Health. It's not yeah, a, you just it's not a prescription. Online. Okay, so you it's just an registered. online It's all online. Okay. Um, and but you must go to your physician first. A physician. It a doesn't physician. need to be the physician that you normally go to because mm -hmm. frequently the people that the your your regular uh, primary care physician will may not be willing to certify you. They may not be in the position to. Uh, it may not be somebody. So, for example, if they work for Straub or Kapilani or Hawaii Pacific Health, they cannot. They cannot. So there are uh, clinics. Is there a list? Uh, we have a list of certifying physicians. Where do they go? Um, just send an email to info at manoabotanicals.com and uh, we will respond with a list of uh, physicians and clinics that uh, will uh, make an appointment, see a patient, and if they have a qualifying condition, uh, we'll certify you. Wonderful. Well, I have to say, uh, Sue and Brian, uh, this has been, uh, it's not enough time because I really wanted yeah. to discuss more about the medical side, and you guys are in such a forefront, especially Manoa Botanicals, and Sue, you as well. You guys are really uh, the most uh, fervent uh, 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 people that I have seen who want to get this thing off the ground. And I know, Brian, you're anxious to get it into the patient's hands because it is a medicine. And for those of you in our audience, uh, I can just say that uh, for me as an individual, I, I've done so much research on it in Israel and I get research that I see. And we just have to get the doctors to understand that this is something that is a medicine. It is not simply a high. I was shocked and amazed when I saw Jeff Sessions, who Sue Sisley talked about and said, do we need more uh, marijuana uh, at the drugstore? I mean, that's a, that's a ridiculous statement that he put out. And I just feel that uh, we have to treat it seriously. Here in Hawaii, we are one of the most progressive states. And I think uh, because we've had medical marijuana laws on the books for how many years, Brian? 17. 17 years. 17 years we've had it on the books and nowhere for people to buy it. Manoa Botanicals will be out there uh, open hopefully this fall. Yeah, later this year. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to help patients find a way to help cure or to help ease some of the pain that they have. So thank you, Brian, and thank you, Sue, in Washington. I, uh, I feel this is one of the most important topics we have because if we can help people in any way, shape, or form, that's what Seymour's World is all about. So thank you for appearing on our show. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having us. It's our pleasure. Thanks, Seymour. Thank you, Sue. And to all of you, I will be back in two weeks with a new commentary as well as a show that I think 
think you will be very, very interested in. Again, all of your comments, all of your emails, texts, and phone calls, as long as you love the show, send them to me. Otherwise, don't send them at all. <laughs> Aloha from Hawaii. Be well, everybody. See you in two weeks from Seymour's World on Think Tech Hawaii. We're done. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Sue, thank you. Great job. Sue, thank you very much.